everyone welcome in the next session of the subject urban and suburban transportation concept and strategy and its organization so far we already covered functional characteristic of those transit mode we also covered the what are the different kind of a transit modes exist and how the planning objective should be look like or what are those <clears throat> so our current topic is about it what are the stages or what are the different types in transit network we do have while while going for the planning for those transit okay so in this specific session is you can see here on the right hand side so all the yellow course we already covered in the midterm course so you need to stay tuned for the final term course to understand uh, starting from the functional characteristic till the that how we can do the scheduling for the public transportation. Uh, as you can see here, this is our typical stages while planning for any type of a transit. Uh, first of all, we will start with the network design and then we will st uh, try to understand that how the route design and stop layout should be look like. And then we will try to understand that how we can determine the frequency and then time tabling and then uh, vehicle scheduling and then crew scheduling. For example, if you try to understand the network design, each and every one uh, I have divided in the different stages. So uh, if you can, if you just look to this uh, typical image, so we are trying to design the network for those transit lines. And then starting from the design, till to assign the crew, this is our transit planning should be look like, okay? Uh, in all those stages, we need a typical factors and indicators and parameters to understand. For example, if we try to understand the the network design, so in the in the network design, as you can see here, first of all, we need to understand those four elements. First of all, transit alignment, how the, the city geometry looks like, what is the population pattern where maximum people are actually living and what kind of travel demand models we do have and we also do need to fulfill the people demand. For example, if you try to understand the transit alignment, so typically we, we do have two type of alignment. One is horizontal while other one is vertical alignment. But of course, we always prefer the very straight route between two origin and destination uh, points, but which is not possible always. So vertical alignment includes different changes in terms of a gradient in vertical curve. <clears throat> when we try to understand the city geometry, that how that city should look, uh, should look like. So urban scaling basically relate to the socio-economic function, which is directly related with the behavioral and physical variable. And those variables are directly related to the to the population, uh, the uh, the the class of those people, the working parameters, and also the urban resilience plus the the uh, the economy or the uh, scale of the economy of those people. So according to the city geometry, then we need to understand the demand and where we should lie or or uh, transit network or line. Third one is about the population pattern. You do you need to understand that do my network design cover all the corner of that specific city. The fourth one is about the travel demand model. So we do have different demand models in order to understand that what kind of existing model do we have and what kind of parameters we do need in the future. So all those parameters are related to the network design. The second point is about the route design and stop layout. For so that second point I have divided in the, uh, I have uh, shifted to the next slide. As you can see here, we have different route design is on the left hand side, you can see here. Here we have the typical lane 
dedicated or allocated for the bus service, while the other modes of transportation actually operate on the other land. So that uh, paved or uh, or the or the kind uh, a bit light red uh, paved marking is completely dedicated for the bus services. But we do have different bus stop designs such as curb side stop and then we have pull out and then we have open bus bay and then we have q jump bus bay and then we have bulb out as you can see here in that specific type curb side stop which provide a very easy approach for all the buses which can a bit causes traffic delays is you can see here because we have only one single lane is going in like that direction. So typically we do have two direction, but we do, uh, but we do not have the the uh, dedicated bus. So if we have any vehicle is moving in that second lane, so that one might delay a bit. Uh, uh, it it might cause a bit traffic delays since those buses have the uh, typical. Uh, driver and of course they have the minimum time as well to stop on that lane as well so which might cause a bit delay the next one is about bus bulb out of course that bus is completely dedicated and completely separated as compared to the other traffic lanes but if you can see here so there will be some time needed to go in that specific infrastructure and then of course some time will be needed to go out from that bus lane and then enter in the mainstream so which might need uh, a bit increase in the total travel time as well as maybe the ongoing traffic in that specific lane might cause a bit delay okay Third one is about the open bus bay. So open bus bay is, you can see here, we do not have the uh, kind of a dedicated infrastructure is like the, the bulb out, but of course, when the same bus will move on, so the same uh, the same type of a, of a, you can call that uh, the uh, re-entry into the congested traffic can maybe cause uh, a bit difficult and may cause delays as well uh, in terms of the passenger alignment and aborting. As you can see here, we have the the uh, next type which is called Q jump bus bay. So Q jump bus bay and open bus bay is almost the, the uh, same. And then the last one we have the bulb out. In the bulb out is you can see here the same uh, bus is actually uh, waiting for the other buses to first leave because we have different buses are operating from the same lane so which is a bit expensive to install and always you need more than one lane so like typically we actually need the the two lanes and of course that will allow buses to decelerate as well in that specific intersection as well so this is all about the route bus design so just you need to understand that what type of for example if you are planning for the brt for like buses so you need to understand that which type of network bus design we are actually need to plan third point is about the frequency determination frequency determination in a simple word that how that what is the peak pattern you need to determine at least two to three decades the real statistic of that specific city uh, and then also you you need to imply the the uh, population parameter as well and then you need to also understand that where the educational the uh, the uh, businesses area recreational spots offices those areas are actually located and then we also need to understand the normal pattern which we call the the uh, the off peak hours and also the total transit units are required to fulfill the demand of that specific network line or city and then fourth point is about the timetabling so a timetabling is actually when you assign or give the timetable so that all those demand 
So like whatever we plan so far through network design, through route design and network stops, and through frequency determination now, all those parameters we have received in those three stages, now we are trying to assign it to the timetable. So the purpose of the timetable is to assign a transit travel to any section of this route for a certain time or in certain day on unlike which those buses will operate. And then we have, of course, the, the vehicle scheduling. So vehicle scheduling is actually to design and assign the route to these specific vehicles because you cannot run or operate all those vehicles at the same time. So we need to, uh, to uh, kind of do for the uh, fulfillment of any specific defined function or objectivity, we need to assign that schedule to the vehicles. And then the last part is about the creve scheduling. So the creve scheduling is after doing the exercise in all those six parameters. So at that point, we had one point number of transit unit required. So first of all, we need to understand that what is your population, what is your demand, and what kind of transit network we do have, and where we will run those transit units. And now we are trying to assign all those timetable to the individual personnel, driver, operator, support, backend support, etc. and etc. Okay, so those are all the stages while planning for any transit lines. Uh, in the in the next topic, we will try to understand uh, in any city that what type of a of a different lines we do have, such as radial line, the metrical line, tangential line, circle line, loop lines, and the trunk line with the branches and feeder lines. So stay tuned for the for the more upcoming session. If you have any question, you can get back in the command section. Thank you very much. Have a nice